Good morning or good afternoon, depending upon your geography, uh, to you all. This is session LA. Uh, do you really understand mainframe modernization? Now, I want to make sure that you're aware that we are recording this session and there will be a QR code at the end for you to provide feedback. And your feedback is important because if you don't tell us what we do good, we might stop doing it. If you tell us something that's bad, we can improve on it in the, in the future. Now, I know we're running a few minutes late here, so I'll get on and I'll introduce Misty Decker from Microfocus. Misty, would you like to start off here? You're muted, are you? Sorry about that, Nick. You unmuted me before and I had to put it on mute and it locks me out. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, we had a conflict today with a, another event that we're running simultaneously. And so we pre-recorded this session. However, it seems that the file has gotten lost. So while they're searching for the file, I figured I would just open uh, the conversation and have a bit of a chat with you. Um, while, while they're busy finding that, uh, that recording. Um, so this session is all about, do you really understand mainframe modernization? And that, that topic came about because of how often we have encountered people that very narrowly define mainframe modernization to be either um, uh, rewriting and replacing or to uh, COBOL applications, or they very narrowly define it to be um, uh, putting your moving off of the mainframe completely when the truth is really much more dynamic and broad than that. So uh, I'm getting pinged here. They're trying to find the file for me. Good times. I hope you all are having a good day. <laughs> yeah. If you just send me the file, I would play it. Nick, I just sent you some more information okay. um, about when that file was sent. And they and and he did confirm that he had received it last week. So I have not oh, found I see. it. I see. Yeah. All right. So since I see Derek Britton on the line, let's talk about um, his session this morning. I hope you had a chance to listen to that session about COBOL is, uh, is new and cool again. Um, there's a lot of really interesting information and I know it'll be available as a replay. So I hope you'll have a chance to go back and listen to that. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening in COBOL right now. And the Open Mainframe Project did a survey uh, uh, to try to understand the current state of, of COBOL. And I won't ruin Derek's punchline of the magic number, but I will tell you it's a lot larger than you expect it to be. And Microfocus is funding an official research project uh, with an agency that's going on right now and um, uh, I hope that you'll all consider participating in that. The best way to really understand what we're dealing with is that uh, to get the data and to really understand the current state so that we know the best way to proceed forward given the context of where we are today. So that survey if one of my friends could find a link while I'm busy doing this other thing, hint, hint, Derek, um, put it in the chat so that people can participate in that survey, I would appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Derek. Okay. 
I really don't know why nobody can find this recording. Um, so let me think of an alternative here. Uh, Well, let me right. let me tee up something, Misty. Just yep. as we're waiting. When the, the term mainframe modernization will have different meanings, different understandings to to different people, I think. Um, and I I haven't been privy to see your recording, so maybe this is what you covered. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. Um, but I'm not trying to trip you up or anything. But maybe just give a a, a quick outline of what's your interpretation of mainframe modernization? Is it taking the applications, moving them? Is mm. it re-scoping re the applications, the presentation layer, something like that? Yeah, so um, the way, well, I'll, I'll start with the story. I worked at IBM for th almost 30 years, just a couple of months shy of 30 years. And in the vast majority of my mainframe career, I really thought in context of modernizing applications in place on that actual mainframe hardware. Um, I do love that hardware. I adore it. Um, worked on it. My husband actually developed ZPDT, the emulator for the hardware. Um, long career with that hardware. There's a lot to it. But one of the things that I've really learned since coming to Microfocus is, is how much broader those opportunities and those technologies really can be and the options. And so it is wonderful. Okay, so there is no recording. So I'm gonna try to wing this here. So um, the, the options are much more broad than, than just modernizing in place. So you might move your application to the cloud. You might um, modernize it on that mainframe hardware in terms of adding an API, or you might move that application into a container so that it can be more portable. Um, you might refactor it, you might rewrite it. The thing is, is that all of those are valid options, but very, very much contingent on the specific situation of this company this application, this business need. And so that is what I'm really trying to encourage people to do is to think more broadly than there is one right solution out of the stack. There isn't one right solution. There's the one right solution for your one particular instance. And you may use a variety of strategies within your own company. You may use a variety of strategies by individual application. Um, so I did find the actual chart deck, so I will go ahead and present. Um, Ed will join us when he is able to. All righty. Just, just for info, uh, Misty, yeah. I think I might have the file. I've just been sent a link from one of the uh, GSE people. I got a message that said it was only the PDF of the charts. Oh, okay. All right. Well, um, I certainly know the material. I've presented it a couple of times. So uh, as I quickly introduce myself, I'm Misty Director, uh, Misty Deckard, <laughs> uh, Product Marketing Director for our mainframe solutions. And my partner in crime here, who is, um, as I mentioned, uh, already engaged in another event uh, and will be joining us as soon as he can, is Ed Airy. And he is uh, the Director of Product Marketing for our COBOL solutions. Um, so I really wanted to start by laying out the landscape of where we are today in modernization. Modernization has been um, talked about for a very, very long time. Uh, I've, I've been hearing this term for forever. However, what's changed is the environment. And this quote by Jelena Williams, who is the chair of the US FDIC, which is the insurance company for every financial institution in the country, sorry, every bank in the, in the country of the United States. So it is not an exaggeration to say that she is the one person responsible for understanding the risk to the banking system in the United States. And when she was asked, what is the one thing you would fix if you had a magic wand, she said, 
this quote, legacy systems. That is her single top of mind thing that she is concerned about that she would fix. So she's not the only one that feels this way, right? There's, there are lots of companies that are becoming increasingly concerned about their outdated systems. Um, to the point where here in the United States, the government is investing a billion dollars in, um, in modernization, in this new technology modernization fund. And a large share of that is looking at legacy systems. It's not just legacy systems, mainframe systems, COBOL applications, but a large portion of it is, um, I'm sorry. One second, telling them to stop looking for the file. Um, so the um, the large share of this is going to be in modernizing those 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 that technology stack. And I want you to think a little more broadly than that word legacy. Legacy is really implies, and the word modernization itself implies that anything old is bad and anything new is automatically good. And it's just not true. Uh, I like to explain the value of COBOL by, by saying that wood is literally the oldest construction material on the planet. And we still use it to build homes, very modern homes. COBOL is just a construction material. It is just a tool. In and of itself, it is not what makes those applications old or outdated. It is the application that is old and outdated. And one of the reasons why I am so excited to be working for Microfocus is because I'm a mainframe fan and because I am sick and tired of being told that what I love and what I work on is old and outdated. It's not the mainframe. It is not COBOL. It is those applications that have not been maintained, that have not been updated, that have not been modernized to respond to the changing business environment. So those applications really are giving all the rest of us in the mainframe space a bad name, if you think about it. So I am on a personal mission to help all of you turn your mainframe environments and your COBOL applications into not just the heart of your companies, but the leader in, in, in innovation and the platform from which all of the other good things can spring. So what do the analysts say? Well, the analysts actually agree with us, of course, otherwise I wouldn't put it in a chart deck. Um, they, they point to the fact that modernization is not a one-time event. And the goal of modernization is not replacing what's old. The goal of modernization is serving the business. So you start with the business need. And I really like this analogy of building a home or fixing a bridge and construction materials. It, it carries through very nicely in that when my daughter was born, we needed a, a nursery. And that's what I use that room for. But then as she grew and she's a child, she, she needs different needs. And you redesign that room. And now that she's moved out of the house, I may repurpose that room to be an office rather than working in my dining room here. Um, and you continue to evolve based on the environment that you're in. And our applications are the same we need to make sure that they continue to evolve and respond to the environment that they're in. The people in your team, the business goals, the, the, the environment that your business, the market that your business is operating in. So you always need to start primarily with that business goal. And I argue that if the business goal listed the primary purpose, the thing we are trying to accomplish is to replace COBOL. You're not business focused, you're application focused, you're, you're technology focused. What is the business need 
the end solution may be we need to rewrite this application. Um, fine. But what is that business need? You start with that. And quite often, when you really analyze the situation, starting with the business need and what are those minimal changes necessary to accomplish that goal, rewriting an entire application, millions of lines of code, um, is not found to be the best solution. And this is what the analysts have determined is that the vast majority of the time, you can accomplish your business goals by leveraging your existing applications in new ways. It might be um, enabling API, API enabling those applications because the core functionality of that application is still working perfectly and doesn't need to change significantly, but you need to leverage it in new ways. So API enabling it is the right choice. It might be breaking that application up into microservices because parts of that application do need to change dynamically. And the example of the changing definitions for um, unemployment insurance in the United States is a great example. The rules for who qualifies for unemployment uh, services would be perfect as a microservice and separate so that it can respond dynamically from the process of actually making those payments. So by breaking that application into microservices without rewriting the entire COBOL is a much faster way to deliver business value than rewriting the entire application simply so you can call it quote modern. Um, the modern part really comes from what it does, not what it's made of. And I love this book, Kill It With Fire. And I encourage you to write that down, Kill It With Fire by Marianne Bellotti. Um, her entire book is really the lessons that she has learned from modernizing um, legacy systems which I don't like that word, but that is what she calls it, but also modernizing new systems, systems written in .NET. She was asked by a startup to modernize an application that was only eight months old. The word modernization implies that that wouldn't be necessary because that implies it's new. Why would it need changing to that level? But they had written it in a way that wasn't flexible and adaptable. So she's using the exact same techniques on brand new code that you would be using on COBOL or PO1. So this word modernization in and of itself can be problematic. She likes to think of it as returning to operational efficiency. So moving the development process and the application itself to, um, to being more dynamic and respond more efficiently to your environment. So let's take a step and think about digital transformation. Microfocus likes to talk about the top line mandate. So we explain it as at the top level, you need to continue to run your business, right? You cannot handle any massive interruptions that rewriting your entire IT stack would cause. But you also have a mandate to transform and to constantly adapt to that environment. Meanwhile, you have the bottom line mandate, which is innovating faster. So inside your organization, not necessarily visible to the external customer, how do we innovate our processes and create an environment that enables that innovation, but with lower risk, without those interruptions? So this is what we call the digital dilemma of how do you handle making those transformations that innovation happen without interruption to your business, without risk. So digital transformation is complicated by the fact that we live in a complicated IT world. When COBOL and mainframes first came out, you had maybe a dozen options. 
and the environment was basically a choice between A or B. But now what we're looking at is increased complexity, which affects agility, costs go way up, and the effectiveness goes down as you get these more and more complex environments. So we have asked reuse or rewrite. This is the classic question we get asked a lot. 92% um, say that their core applications still remain strategic to their businesses. And IT projects that are rewriting those applications, there's a 71% failure rate. So we have a long history of knowing that what we are talking about, mainframe applications and COBOL applications are absolutely essential. They are the heart of those businesses, but modernizing them can be hard. So this is where we have found that the fastest way to get those results is to bridge your old technology to the new. Replacing it is just too expensive. And I like to use the analogy of, I want to have um, a lovely space for me to work in an office. I'm not gonna tear down my entire house to build a brand new house just because my needs have changed. I'm gonna remodel, I'm gonna add an addition. I'm gonna find a less expensive way to solve that problem. And that is what we're talking about here is leveraging what you already have in order to enable the new and leverage the new technology by connecting it to what you already have and already has proven itself to work for your business quite reliably. Those older applications, have been through years of testing, not months. And so they're very, very reliable for a reason. Um, so our vision for modernization is that this is a holistic solution. And, and that's where I started before I even showed these charts, was that we think much more broadly about the option. We're not trying to convince you that there is one solution that is the best for every case. We talk about how you, helping you find the right solution for your situation. And we bring to that over a thousand successful customer projects and what I think it's 40 years of experience in the mainframe space and modernizing applications with whatever the modern tool of the day is, right? So these are some of the words that we hear in the modernization space, DevOps, cloud, open source, containers, all of these words, they're all part of modernization. It's not one or the other, okay? And no two projects in your company are the same. You might choose APIs in one situation and move to uh, a rewrite in another. Your priority in one team may be to move to DevOps, but you might have another application that you're not anticipating to need changes very frequently. It might need to change every two years. Why would you invest in moving to an agile DevOps environment for an application you don't need to change? So you have to analyze the specific situation for every single project. To help you get your mind around it, um, because it is complex, right? I'm really not helping you in a sense by saying you have many, many options. Um, you're staring at a shelf full of 40 different types of toothpaste. How do you know which one is right for you? So, we have developed this modernization maturity model to help you structure the thinking. And it's a framework to help you identify the best solution for your situation. It comes down to three main categories. Application, those applications itself. What are the markets and the services that are needed for that application? Is there a proliferation of devices? What are the competitive forces? In the process area, you really need to think about 
how we're delivering to the market is what what are the needs for speed and quality what sort of skills do we have access to can we do devops is that what strategic and then on the infrastructure side is you know what are the new cost models how do we need to fund this uh on premise versus cloud and thinking about the secure access and, and managing your data. So this maturity model is not invented out of thin air. It has been developed based on 45 years of experience, 30 of those in modernization projects, over a thousand customer engagements. And we invest 40 million in a year in our modernization technology. So as part of that modernization maturity model, we give you this framework to try to think through your, your assessment. So here on the top line are your business drivers. Are you looking for cost optimization or minimizing operational risk, simplification, time to market? So these are your business drivers. And then on the bottom row here are your technical drivers. Is complexity a technical issue for you? Is availability or maintainability your issues? Scale, security, these are your technical drivers. When you put those pieces together for your specific situation, that's when you come and you determine the right application strategy for you. It could be any of these wonderful R words, retire, replace, retain, rehost, replatform, refactor. Um, you see retain is in there. Doing nothing is an option. Um, retiring is an option. You don't, if the, if the application is no longer necessary, that is an option. But so is rehost or replatform or refactor. Um, so this is the modernization maturity model. I encourage you to take a quick look at it. Um, it has all of this that I gave you in a lovely brochure that you can share within your organization um, or contact with us. It's really meant to be a framework for those conversations. And we do provide a free service to help you have those initial conversations to determine the best strategy for your particular situation. These are generic strategies. We are not coming in and only advocating for our software and services. Of course, we think we have the best solutions for those, those um, applications um, that need to retain in COBOL or refactor or you wanna analyze. We have fabulous, fabulous tools built on decades of experience. However, the consultation is really your chance to pick our expert brains. Um, and we're there to help you figure this out. So hopefully you've come to the conclusion that we're a great partner for you to consider um, that modern, modernization rather than abandonment is a really good strategy and that we have a unique broad range of modernization technology. Um, we are not advocating for one strategy alone. We are here to enable the full range um, and that we continue to invest in the full range of options and the, the tools and technology to enable that. And the, the microfocus modernization maturity model is there to help you with these conversations and to plan your digital transformation journey with confidence. So there you go. Off the top of my head, without a script, hopefully you got something out of this today. Um, I want to encourage you, um, next week is Malcolm will be presenting why the mainframe needs to be modernized connection and protection. So even if you're using ISPF on a real mainframe hardware, there are uh, solutions using RPA or um, uh, uh, host access in the cloud so you don't have to install a Telnet 3270 emulator on your laptop. We, we have a wide variety of options that Malcolm will take you through next week. Um, 
Tomorrow, there is Driving the DevOps Pipeline, a new approach to mainframe application delivery. So this will take you through the full range of how you can deliver those mainframe applications. Even if the resulting application is on the mainframe, you may choose to do development and testing in the cloud. And Brian Crane will take you through the variety of options from a DevOps point of view. And um, this one next Tuesday, the 9th is kind of fun. Sidanshu Dubé is a student who just recently graduated um, from uh, grad school. He's now working at Accenture. Um, and he spent last summer working for the Open Mainframe Project, taking a COBOL banking application that we use to do demos with, a giant monolith of code. And he used these modernization techniques on them to prove that it's possible. This is not that hard. A student with only a few months of experience was able to do it. Um, I think I will be replacing Gary on that session. So you'll be able to join me again, um, but mostly you should go to that session to listen to Sidanshu. He's really done a tremendous job. So with that, I believe I will be opening it up for questions. Let me stop sharing. So, so far, Misty, we've 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 had some discussion in the chat. Oh, good. Um, and the uh, Derek put up the survey that you alluded to right at the beginning. Thank you, Derek. And Chris Christian Hodel has said, "Can you fix the attachment link?" Which is probably not down to you. This is probably down to GSC. <laughs> um, saying it's not working for this PDF. So yes, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Mm. Um, I don't see any specific questions to the content of your, um, your, your presentation. So if I may, I'll, I'll stick a random one out there. Um, hopefully you, you don't think it's an unfair question or anything. Please say it's not my remit. Bring it, Nick, bring it. <laughs> I would just say something that we see quite often or is certainly brought up is the skill side of it that mm. um there are loads of customers out there they they have perhaps not code that's older than me but older than a lot of people and i i found it very interesting seeing the session that you are advertising for next week where um code that's older than you a newbie's perspective or something like that do you mm. run into a skills problem very often, well, that's what the, the your consultancy services are, are, are providing. I think you get the drift of my. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. And I'm um, I'm really glad you asked that question because the last five years I spent at IBM was leading the IBM Z Academic Initiative Worldwide Program. So, this was my entire job in life for five years, <laughs> and I and I continue to engage as a volunteer. Um, mentored another student yesterday. Uh, I mentor students one-on-one, -on -one, probably one or two a week. Um, and from a, from a company point of view, I will tell you that the difficulty in finding skills is largely a perception issue. And, and what I mean by that is it's somewhat a self-fulfilling prophecy in that Companies assume students don't want to work with COBOL or don't want to work on mainframe technology. And so they um, don't try to recruit students. They try to recruit more experienced people um, of which there aren't enough to go around. And the students are never exposed to the fact that these technologies exist because it is a back-end technology. So unless you're maintaining your own enterprise, you're not gonna know about COBOL or mainframe. And the universities, because there's not a lot of companies recruiting at the universities, stopped teaching the program, which was from their point of view, a business decision. They teach what is in demand. So if there's no demand, there's no teaching. There's no teaching there's an assumption that they can't get the students, so there's no demand. 
So it kind of feeds in on itself. Um, I will tell you in my experience in five years of, of working with students, it was very easy, very, very easy for me to get students interested in mainframes in COBOL. You would be stunned. Um, I would start a session with a, a room full of 100 and something students, and I would ask them to raise their hands of how many had heard of a mainframe or were interested in mainframes. And I was lucky if I got two hands. At the end of my session, I would ask them, how many of you are going to leave here today and actively go do master the mainframe, actively learn more about mainframes, and easily 95%. Wow. Easily. So this technology is very exciting in what it can do and the importance it has in the world. And that is essentially what, what this next generation really wants to do. They want to make an impact. They want to do something that's important. And that is what this technology is. And I always mission them with, don't just come in and get a mainframe job. We're counting on you to lead the modernization charge. And, and that was what we decided to do with Sudanshu was, was to demonstrate that you don't have to have 30 years of experience in order to have a massive impact in your business, in your mainframe environment. So, so from an employer point of view, IBM has that whole academic initiative program, yep. um, which is uh, really, really a fantastic program. Um, Broadcom has, has launched their own campaign um, where they, are, they, they basically have apprentices about a dozen at a time. Um, that then work on contract for companies that are looking for skills. My number one tip for you is that just pick your local school and go and do a guest lecture and tell the students why they should care. Yep. Um, from a diversity point of view, because this is another area where I'm very, very passionate, um, diverse students they are assuming they're not going to be welcome, whether it's females or people of color, they are assuming that they are not going to be welcome. And so they're hesitant to go into new situations. And you can get a leg up on capturing the best talent, the most diverse talent by being present and being a person to them, not a business. And you do that by going and doing events. So in the United States, we have um, schools that are known as historically black colleges and universities. So I would go and run a workshop at one of these um, historically black colleges and get to know the students personally one-on-one -on -one, and then encourage them to apply. And they feel more comfortable doing so because they A, got a personal invitation which gives them a shot of confidence and B, feel like they already have a friend there, right? Yeah. So that is my number one tip for recruiting mainframers, recruiting COBOL programmers, especially of, of diverse backgrounds, go to them, get to know them, invite them. And it literally 30 minutes, a 30 minute conversation is all it can take. And that's why I do so many of those 30 minute um, mentoring sessions. And if anybody wants to volunteer, um, I do get contacted in private messages on LinkedIn and on Twitter quite frequently. Um, if, if reaching out to these communities is something you would like to do, I'd be more than happy to send people your way. Um, con connect with me on LinkedIn and send me messages there because I hate email <laughs> <laughs> with a uh, passion. Um, so I'll put my LinkedIn into the chat here and connect with me there and send me messages. If you're looking for students, if you'd like to mentor, um, if you just want to share your thoughts about mainframes, diversity, COBOL, modernization, students, any of that. Any other oh, questions? And I see Derek is adding some wonderful comments yes. in the chat. 
Una has said, I tried the survey and I can't access it, as it says mm. I am accessing it through an invalid link. Um, I can't really comment there. Great. Um, I've just asked Ed to unmute just in case he's got a question that, or- oh, there's comment. Ed. Yes. Here we are. Hi, Ed. Hi, hello there. Good afternoon. How are you? Yes, very fine. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Misty did a gr grand job on the, on the fly there. Um, almost like I've talked about this topic before. Yeah, yes. It was almost <laughs> like two, yes. new material. It was very, very strange. I just wondered if there was, I know, I know you were coming in for the Q&A at the end, Ed. I just wondered if there was any any specifics you wanted to just chip in or, so I gave well, you the Well, yes, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And um, appreciate the opportunity as well to um, have the discussion with uh, the GSC uh, uh, group here. I, I think um, hopefully the, the presentation was um, pretty straightforward in terms of the topic of modernization. I'm sure as Misty has outlined, I mean, it's, it's um, very interesting topic and there's lots of different avenues in terms of where you where to take the conversation depending on what modernization may mean or may not mean to an organization strategy i i think i'd like to certainly remind the audience and i know we talked a little bit about it during the presentation that there's a, a great opportunity to uh, participate um in a community initiative that um uh, Microfocus is uh, has has uh, effectively commissioned through a, a partner called vance and born uh, research firm um, and effectively we we're in, in sort of the spirit of um, sort of quantifying what the modernization opportunity really is in, in the marketplace we're, we're looking a bit closer as to how to uh, best quantify how many lines of COBOL are really out there um, I know there's been a variety of different studies and and um, and uh, research efforts applied towards looking at that uh, uh, that type of data. And I think we've got a slightly different approach this time around in terms of what we're implementing mm -hmm. with Vance and Bourne. Um, but we'd very much appreciate, um, you know, the community, uh, GSC community, and, and certainly mainframe community overall participating and having their voice. Um, I think the, the more responses certainly make the, the data and the analysis uh, more credible. And again, I, I think I'm sure the the GSC audience would agree with with us is that we think the opportunity is quite immense um, when we look at the uh, amount of COBOL that's out there, particularly running on IBM Z. Uh, there's quite a bit of opportunity there for organizations to look at modernizing those systems for the future. So I, I guess that, that would be um, my request, uh, Nick, uh, to the audience would be to, um, you know, if you don't have the link to join the survey, I, I think it was in the presentation and hopefully you'll get a copy of those slides. Misty Derek and I can posted certainly... it for us in the chat. So they all have a, a link, uh, the link. Even better. Thank you, Misty. Mm -hmm. So great way to participate. And um, thank you for that. Thanks, Ed. Is there anyone else who wants to ask a question? I see there's, I, I saw the magic word beer come up just in, <laughs> in, in the chat. But. You, you want me to talk about beer because, you know, that's another topic I've talked quite a lot about. <laughs> I think that's, that's about it, Misty. Thank you again. Thank you for just stepping up there and uh, talking on the fly. Apologies from my point of view. I wasn't aware it was a, a recording um, yeah. So thank you for uh, providing the information and content. It's great. No, it was it was wonderful chatting with uh, so many of you here today. And I hope that you'll stay connected. Um, we have lots of great stuff coming out, some of it which I cannot announce yet, but uh, some pretty exciting stuff coming up soon. So be sure to follow us on Twitter or uh, on LinkedIn. And uh, Ed and I both post regularly, and you'll you'll be the first to know. It, those who know us are the ones that know the the soonest. So definitely get connected. Okay. Um, in that case, I think we'll close close this session off. Uh, let people have a quick break before the 
um, two o'clock sessions will start. So again, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Misty. Thanks, Ed. And uh, don't forget to check out those uh, sessions that Misty highlighted uh, for next week. Great. And tomorrow. Okay. And tomorrow. I was <laughs> okay. paying attention, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nick. Cheers.